Okay. So um, I would like to thank you for coming here in the first place. Certainly. Really. Um, and start out with maybe talking about your first name and the story you might have for the spelling of your first name. Oh. Oh, the Cindy thing? Yeah. Oh. You know that story? I do know that story, yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, um, my I spell my first name C-Y-N-D-I. And... I spell it like that because, I think this is a story, you know, I spell it like that because in sixth grade I had a um, babysitter that her name was Cindy and I thought she was super cool and she spelled her name like that. So I started spelling my name like that because I used to spell it C-I-N-D-Y and I started spelling it C-Y-N-D-I and it stuck even though my dad still spells it C-I-N-D-Y. He doesn't spell C-Y but I it just stuck, so I started spelling it like that because of my babysitter. Very nice. Yeah. Um, so I'd also like to, very important part, go into um, what new room you're in this year and the significance of that new room. Sad. Okay. Um, so I'm in M7, and um, I used to be in M12, but I'm in M7 because I'm not doing yearbook this year. Sad face. And... Um, so Miss Marine needed that yearbook room because it's fantastic and has the hallway, Yarnia. But I'm not doing yearbook because my dad's health hasn't been great, so um, I needed to take a step back. And so Mr. Vetrano retired, so his room was available. So Miss Marine and I switched since I'm not doing yearbook anymore. So I just needed a little more time and um, not that deadline panic feel right. this year. So is that one of the biggest differences in not being an advisor anymore? Mm -hmm. There's two. One is that um, the biggest difference is one is that I have um, just a little more time if I need to get to my dad's. I mean, we just moved my dad this weekend to his fourth place in, in 16 months since he's been here. So, um, and I, we didn't know that. So that's, it's like ongoing. It's always something. Um, and he doesn't drive anymore. So grocery shopping, doctor's appointments, everything we have to do for him. Um, so that's, yeah, I have a little more time. You know, I don't have that panic feel of deadlines sometimes that you feel. Um, and then the other difference is I don't, it, I don't get to be with students that I adore and um, have relationships with. I miss that part of it. Um, that's the biggest part I miss. Yeah. yeah. So how would you describe your relationship with your father or your parents? Well, <laughs> um, my relationship with my dad right now is, um, it's good, you know, it's uh, sort of almost like caregiver, um, not so much father-daughter relationship, and, but we're close and I'm there for him. Um, my mom died uh, about 10 years ago and I was super close to her and she was amazing. Um, so my relationship with my dad has changed really since my mom's death. I don't really, I've gotten to get to, I've gotten to know him in some ways that I didn't before. I'm not sure if my mom just kind of protected me from that or because, you know, I don't necessarily like all of the traits that I'm seeing. I don't know why I didn't really see them before, but, you know, it's just who he is. So I'm just trying to redefine my relationship with him and give him the care that he needs. He deserves it. He needs the help. So I'm here for him. And yeah. I know your dad has some sayings that um, you kind of go <laughs> by. Could you share some of those with us? Oh, goodness. Um, Okay, so probably two, well, there's a few, but um, uh, my dad always told me that indecision kills you. So make a decision and then live with it. And whatever those repercussions are, the consequences, you'll just make it work. But living in limbo, like should I, should I not, should I, should I not, even like that decision to not do yearbook, I, I had to weigh those and it was hard. And, to, and once I finally made that decision and talked to Mr. Shepard and then finally talked to students, um, it was better, even though it was hard. It um, you, you can move forward when you're in limbo, indecision. You can't you can't really move forward. So that's one. And then the other one is he used to always tell me that I had my um, mouth in gear before my brain was engaged, and that's not always a way that you should behave. So you should think before you speak, and I I try to do that. But when I was younger, I guess I didn't do that very much. <laughs> so, yeah. so I know that you. 
Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you've shared them with your children. Mm -hmm. Is there uh, other things that you've shared with your children about like life experiences or the fact that you never traveled, things like that? Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot. I try the regrets that I have from when I was younger. Yes, I share with my students, as you know, both of you being in my English class now, I probably talk too much about my kids or my regrets or whatever. But yeah, I, um, I'm encouraging, I'll encourage my kids to um, do a year abroad or a quarter abroad or a semester to be able to travel a little bit because I definitely haven't done that enough. Um, so I would also tell them, I also, um, I want them to find something that they love. Um, it doesn't have to be a, a big money maker, but you have to love what you do in the future. I want them to find something that they love. Um, and I, my big thing with them is that uh, I want them to do the right thing when nobody's looking. It's easy to do the right thing when people are watching, but it's more important to do it when nobody's watching. So I don't know if they do or not, but I hope they do. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, speaking of your children, I know um, that Michelle, your daughter, is, um, was born deaf. Mm -hmm. Can you um, describe a little bit of what that was like? Well, um, it was heart-wrenching really, when I found out, because you have hopes and dreams for your kids, and um, y when something changes, you have to redefine your hopes and dreams for them, and that takes time and maturity, and um, so it took me a little while to figure out um, what I could do to help her. Um, but really, actually now, my hopes and dreams for her are no different than what they were before I knew that she was deaf, uh, but you feel like things are gonna change. They don't really have to, I mean, and there's, sure, little things, you know, that, that you definitely have to do to adjust, but um, you know, I think how you behave or how I, as a parent, um, handled that helped her be successful and confident, I hope. And then your boys, which are <laughs> twins, so that's also an experience in itself. Mm -hmm. Can you describe that for us? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's crazy. It's wild and fun, and um, I always say that, uh, uh, that my boys are our best friends and bitter enemies. Uh, they really are there for each other no matter what, and they don't have a super wide circle of friends, um, but I think that's just because they have a built-in friend. So on the weekends, if they have some free time, they're hanging out with each other, and it's like having a friend over 24 hours a day which when they were little was a little more challenging. So yeah, I definitely have had life challenges with my kids, but um, my life's richer because of that. It hasn't been easy, but um, they're, uh, I think they're confident and um, caring kids. And that's what I care most about is that they're, uh, the way that they treat others is um, positive. So right. yeah, it's challenging. Mm -hmm. are seniors this year. Yep. So, uh, mm -hmm. what are your plans for after they're all in college? Well, I plan to grocery shop a lot less <laughs> and cook a lot less dinners. And um, I, I don't know, I guess just uh, visit them wherever they are. I want them to go away. I think that will be, I think they're ready to go away. So, um, I bought a kayak this summer. I'll probably kayak a little bit more. Um, I'll probably read just for pleasure a little bit more, maybe. I don't know, I'll still be grading papers, so. Um, I don't know, plan for, plan for my retirement when I can retire maybe and hang out with them even more when they're off in their lives. I, I don't know, I'll just take it as it comes, I guess, I don't have a special plan. I like the word apropos. <laughs> I don't know. I, I like it. Be, I, nobody really uses that word, but it's a great word. It means it's, you know, it's like fitting for a particular time, whatever you're doing. Okay. Um, Do you have a word that's your least favorite? Any cuss word? <laughs> I don't like cussing, and all my students know that. My ears. Uh. Um, least favorite. Yeah, I don't like, you know, dumb or stupid or labelish type words. Yeah. Do you have a, a sound that you love? <laughs> the sound? Yes, like peaceful sound. Quiet, non, 
um, just sounds that, that, this is crazy. I love the sound of the dryer running. I don't know why, but I like to listen to the dryer running. It's just, it's calm. It's, it's like a home, it's, it's homey. I like um, sounds that remind me of family. And so my dryer running, my kids are there, I'm running laundry, um, I'm at home relaxing. The dryer, I don't know, sounds, what else? I definitely, okay, so like we're a water family. We swam, we boat, whatever. We like all that kind of stuff. So probably water too. Um, I don't know, is that, is that okay? Yep, perfect. Okay. Um, and then I know obviously you are a teacher here, mm -hmm. English teacher. Um, is there a profession that you would like to do besides teaching maybe, or that you thought you would like to do when you were younger? Um, yeah, I, I, actually a few things. Well, when I retire, I'm gonna be a barista at Starbucks, you know? I'm gonna have a job where I just go, I'm gonna go work after I think, well, maybe not, I don't know, but I'm gonna go to a job where I um, like just do the job and then go home, yeah. and you don't bring anything home with you. You just like, you have your time to yourself because we sort of have, it's not, we sometimes English papers to grade sort of sometimes are like a ball and chain. You know, we, we don't like to say that because it makes students feel like we don't, like that's terrible. But you know, you always sort of have that I always have that English work to do. Even in the summer, there's planning and whatnot. So it would kind of be fun to have a job where you didn't have to do any of that. But I think I would, um, I would have loved to have been a speech therapist. Uh, speech therapy really interested me. I had some classes in college that I really liked, which is ironic since I have a deaf daughter and we did the whole speech right. thing and everything. But I took speech classes in college and loved them. So, um, uh, or, yeah, or an audiologist working with, with deaf kids. Um, not just because she's deaf, it's just intriguing speech, whatnot to me, so, yeah. And then a profession that you don't think you would ever want to do. I don't think I could ever work in the prisons, <laughs> like <laughs> a warden or, um, uh, yeah, I, I struggle with that would be really hard. I'm kind of a chicken. I'm a, I'm a rule follower. Like, I follow the rules. So when people don't follow the rules, I kind of like, why not? Why don't you follow the rules? So I wouldn't be a very good game warden, or I mean, a prison warden. Right. Yeah. Just, <laughs> I'm scared me. I'm chicken. I don't, I like the lights on and, you know. That's okay. Yeah. And then um, our final thing is, uh, could you quote, I know you don't watch many movies, mm. but <laughs> could you quote a movie? Um, I don't watch very many movies, yeah. Um, yeah, oh, oh, you like, good, that's good, thanks for helping. Um, okay, so, well, can I quote a book? Because it is, one of my favorite lines is from, any, yeah? Yeah. So my favorite line from To Kill a Mockingbird is Miss Maudie, when she's talking to Scout about Atticus and um, his ability to shoot the gun, and the kids never knew that. So she says to Scout, um, people in their right minds never take pride in their talents. And for me, you know, it's not just like a funny line from a movie, but it has meaning. And so I think that um, if you're really great at something, your actions speak for you. And, you know, if you produce a really great yearbook, you don't have to tell people how great that yearbook is. You just know because they see it and they love it. And so you don't have to say anything. So I like that. Um, and I always kind of joke about the Ferris Bueller's Day Off because I don't know why, you know, it's the teaching part of it, where that one teacher talks in the monotone when he's like, Bueller, Bueller, anyone? Anyone? Like, I hope I'm never, ever like that as a teacher. I probably am sometimes, but, like, I don't ever want to be that monotone, you know, teacher, Bueller, so. Um, yeah, okay, well, thanks. I try not to be. Yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, that's, that's the only movie line I know. I don't watch movies. I know, I don't know why. It's weird. All the time. That's a good one. Yeah. Thank so. you so much for coming. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me.